Lush, and I'm here inside the Hub Culture studio in Davos. It's 2018. I'm really pleased that Helen High has stopped by. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you, Edie. You need a goodwill ambassador, and you are the CEO of the Made in Africa initiative. Now tell me what your message is to the people here in this snowy realm. Something close to my heart, it is job creation in Africa, because I think that's not only Africa's problem. In my opinion, the current refugee crisis in Europe is just the tip of the iceberg. If there's 1.2 billion population in Africa, if there's not enough job being created in that continent, in the next 10 years, we're going to see a much bigger security issue for Europe and then the rest of the world. So I think it's our responsibility and our duty to make the job creation in the continent in the coming 10 years. And that's also the ultimate goal to achieve SDG, leaving no one behind. So you've done exactly that. So you've created jobs through a clothing factory and a shoe factory. And tell me what impact what you did had on the local economy. Okay, talking about this economic transformation, I like to draw a little bit of our human history. From year 1950 to 2008, there's about 200 developing economies globally. But in reality, only two economies moved from lower income status to higher income status. That is South Korea and Taiwan. China likely to be the third one by 2025. Mm. And out of those 200 developing economies, there's only 30 of them moved from middle income status to higher income status. And out of those 30 economies, eight of them are in Europe. The original GDP gap are small. The other five are the Asia Four Tigers plus Japan. So in our human history, despite the common consensus in the 1950, Africa has a much better chance for mm -hmm. economic transformation because natural resources. Asia is a whole place continent. The reality is the opposite. So what is went wrong? I would say two things. Number one, job creation has been the key for poverty reduction in Asia, in those countries are able to make it. And the secret of those countries, how they can create so much jobs, the secret is they were able to capture the golden opportunity during the 60s and 80s, during industrialization relocation, which they were able to create millions of jobs for the people in the bottom of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And that is a jump start of those countries' economic transformation. Right now, there's a golden opportunity. Why? Because the GDP per capita in China in the year I was born, 1978, is only 154 US dollars, which is less than one third of the sub saharan Africa countries. And according to China's forecast, by 2025, China is going to become a high income country. That means by 2025, all those labor intensive jobs after 30 years golden manufacturing is going to relocate out of China. Mm. This round of relocation is far more complicated. Why? When Japan was relocating in the 60s, they only relocated 9.7 million jobs. And in the 80s, when Korea was relocating, they only relocated 2.3 million jobs. This round, 85 million jobs. Where would those jobs to go? Mm. The country are able to capture a significant of those jobs, which is going to have the same opportunity for economic transformation, like China and Asia for Tigers. So this is, I think, we should actually jointly to support Africa to tap into this golden opportunity to capture a significant proportion of those 85 million jobs. And that is going to help Africa in the next 30 years for their jump start in their economic transformation. It's not just good for Africa, right, though? I mean, I know that you must be one of those people who puts profit alongside purpose. So it must have been beneficial for you to put your companies there uh, in Rwanda as well. I think private sector, they didn't come to Africa to do aid. But mm. then in order for the development to be sustainable, I'm looking like if there's a circle of development, there's a circle of business. I'm mm -hmm. looking at the common the the, mm -hmm. the connection the inside of the Venn diagram. Exactly, yeah. because that is to make sustain to make development sustainable. Mm. And then because currently the most important thing for a lot of business they want to come to Africa. But the key differentiator is whether they are going to create local jobs, mm. whether they are going to generate foreign uh, investment mm -hmm. and whether they are going to help the country to gen generate foreign exchange. That is the most important KPIs. And clearly, you know, for light manufacturing sector, that's feed the bill. And that's actually those private sector having exactly the same agenda as the country's uh, development for their job creation. So what's next? What do you, how optimistic are you? 
I've been working in this since 2011, setting up the first factory in Ethiopia, creating 4,000 jobs. And I've been working with uh, several African government creating industrial zones. And mm. I want to share with you, I'm very excited. Why? Because uh, there is an uh, industrialization movement has already started. The latest industrial zone in Ethiopia, we are working with the government, is 100% to textile and garments. Mm -hmm. It's about to create 60,000 local jobs and generate 1 billion export revenue. That is only in one industrial park. And Ethiopia's case has a big snowballing effect. Right now, UNIDO and also the Made in Africa Initiative were working with several Africa head of states on their industrialization strategy and creating the quick success mm. because we want to bring the inspiration, leadership, confidence, and experience to the continent and to the people. Helen, thank you so much for stopping by. If anyone can do it, I have this feeling that you can. I love your enthusiasm. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm Edie Lash here in Hub Culture. Thank you.